Hello and welcome to all our viewers from around the world. I'm Kristen Schwarz, licensed midwife and one of the MCs here at Gold and Gold Midwifery. And with me here today is one of our speakers for our upcoming Gold Midwifery online conference of 2022. And we have Augustine Kohlbrook here with us. Uh, welcome, Augustine. Hi, Kristen. Thanks so much for having me. It is wonderful to have you here. And uh, for our audience, first of all, tell us where in the world are you located? Um, I'm currently in India. I live and work here in India. I'm the clinical director of the Birth Home, uh, which is a project of Birthwise LLC, which is an amazing initiative to bring midwifery model of care to women in India. And I have been working here for just a little over a year, and I love it so much. Oh, wonderful. I'm so glad, uh, happy to hear that. Number one, first of all, I love, and this never gets old for me, uh, being with uh, birth professionals, birth workers out in the world from all around the world, because I feel like we can learn so much from each other, from, you know, how midwifery is done in, in, in all around the world. And, and this is fascinating to me. So I'm glad you're here today. And uh, so tell us a little bit about your work there in India. So it, you are there a little over a year, you said, and um, in this initiative, uh, what does your day look like? Uh, how many women are there that or families uh, you are uh, working with? Yeah, well, it's a really exciting integrative model. We are combining um, many different challenges into hopefully a very successful model. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have physicians, uh, midwives, midwives, um, one midwives who are in training, nurses, um, and a whole administrative staff. And together we um, run what looks like um, a birth center model. So in the UK and Australia and the US, there are birth centers that are separate from hospitals. So our model looks like that, but we are a licensed hospital because of the regulations and legitimacy here in India. So it's kind of a funny hybrid. Mm -hmm. um, and our goal is to create true integrative care um, with a collaborative team so that um, uh, we're scaling towards having in-house um, uh, emergency services as well so that uh, the clients don't have to be transferred in the night to a different facility, yeah. which is the whole new idea, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. It sounds, that sounds to me like the perfect world you're creating, over, <laughs> you know, like That's you have the, yeah. the midwifery model of care, being with the family, being, you know, offering that and, and, and have this collaboration of healthcare providers, which uh, you probably know from, uh, you know, countries, other countries and uh, your background in the United United States is not always easy, right? Sometimes. So if you create something like that, it's it's beautiful. To me, that sounds like the ideal, how the ideal birth, birth world would look like for families to give yeah. them that beautiful integrative service. Yeah, we feel the same way. We're borrowing a lot from New Zealand's uh, policy and procedures and processes of integrative care. Uh, we're looking at some really amazing initiatives that are happening in, in other uh, places in the world. Um, Obviously, the NHS has been uh, an incredible uh, work over the years of combining um, home, hospital, birth center, midwives, doctors, nurses. They're all a part of maternity care. That's exceptional. Um, we're looking at some of the midwifery initiatives in other countries. We have um, collaborative consulting relationships with uh, midwives in, in Ethiopia and Zimbabwe wow. and um, Uganda and different places where we're talking about how this is happening in places where there are uh, challenges or barriers to access. And one of the major biggest barriers to, to access is, is the lack of direct entry midwifery. And so that's one thing that is really exciting for me because I am a direct entry midwife. Right, right. And, and um, um, it, you know, that's a very important point you're making there, you know, the, the, the direct entry midwife, especially in, in countries, you know, in rural areas, you know, where, where um, hospitals are not always near. And, you know, these community midwives are so important, right? And, and we need more of them worldwide. So it's important. not just, a, you know, no matter worldwide. where you look. It's actually... Yeah, it's a global shortage. It's a yeah. real problem. Um, and with population growth um, and and uh, the, the challenges that we see with physician shortages, the only solution is more midwives. And one of the best solutions is to take away the barrier of nursing to entry, enter midwifery. Yes. Because as, as you and I both know, yep. um, nursing is a separate profession. It's a very it important profession. There's nothing yes. negative about it, but, yes. it, but they're separate from midwifery. And so if we can go directly to midwifery, um, especially cross-training, 
happening. There are so many mid-level or mid-career professionals who are ready to transition into a different kind of helping job. Um, so currently, um, the the midwifery students that I work with, um, they are in. Uh, they came from uh, physiotherapy. One's a doctor of physiotherapy. One was an architect, and one was an engineer. Like they don't need to go and get another degree in nursing. Right. They just need to right. become midwives, right? So, yes. so yeah, mm-hmm. it's very exciting, and we have a great group of physicians that work with us, and we're able to deliver care um, anywhere from uh, 10, 12, 15 clients a month right now. And Mm -hmm. um, when we move to the new bigger facility, of course, we will be able to deliver much more care. And that's the goal. Beautiful. So it's a scalable yeah. model um, that could be totally. it could be anywhere in the world, really. You know, and, and that's the goal. Be, this could be a model yep. for for everyone to look at. And I'm so glad you mentioned the direct entry midwives. This is near to my heart because this is how I yep. started out too. It wasn't my yep. first career. I had a completely different degree and and then became a direct entry midwife as well. So um, that's and awesome. It's 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 just fantastic. But also having this collaborations with OBGYNs, yes. with nurses, with you know doulas, IV. Yes. Sees anybody you know, because that yes. it, it kind of creating that village to take care of the family is just wonderful to me and, and honestly it's it's the only way and I guess I want to I want to say one more thing and that's yes. just the curiosity that I'm in India I'm not Indian mm-hmm. I love the Indian culture and the folks um, but I'm I see myself as a placeholder so I'm just holding space um, mm-hmm. until um, the the local folks feel ready and have passed their exams and are ready to practice and this is kind of our other major focus in our care project and that is culturally matched care yes um, we know statistically that 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 we have better outcomes, we have less depression, we have better um, breastfeeding rates, we have happier clients when they're taken care of by people that look and sound like them. Yeah. So yeah. I just want to make it really clear that as a clinical director, I'm not, um, you know, my my role here is not to provide a lot of direct entry, direct care. My my role is to support the local providers in, in getting the midwifery model of care. So the physicians that I work with um, are family practice physicians who are learning um, how to care for obstetric patients through the midwifery model, which is so, so oh, exciting. Beautiful. How, how that, that they get that education about the midwifery model of care, you know, not just the medical background, but also how to be with, with women. And um, you are absolutely right. It is so uh, important to have um, care providers, midwives, nurses, anybody who looks and speaks like them, who knows the culture, who is from there That's to right. take care That's of their right. families, because who else can better understand uh, what these families experiencing, you know, um, right. than them. So yeah, it's, it's, a wonderful it's the first work. step in preventing trauma, honestly. Yeah. Is, yes. yeah. So we feel very strongly about that. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Oh, wonderful. I'm so happy to hear this because, uh, you know, it, it just uh, makes me very happy to see a development of this. Um, and, and I will hope to hear more about this in the future when you tell me that you're moving to a bigger facility and, and so on. So that's, that's wonderful. Um, now we also want to talk about the presentation you are having here with us at Gold Goes a little bit into a different level area here. And the presentation is about defensive charting for community based midwives and I'm so glad you're presenting on this topic because this is a not a very comfortable topic right we love to talk about the beautiful birth we we have uh, you know this is our passion we want to provide that service to our family but with that goes a lot of responsibility as well and uh good charting good record keeping for me it's always this um we're keeping the chart for them it's their medical record for the family that's something that, that's their property that's something they belongs to the service that we're providing too but it can get very tricky especially in situations that are not going that well you know and and uh, so but we need to be on top of our chart game which isn't easy and so I'm so glad you will be presenting about this so tell us a little bit about it well the the title of my presentation is defensive charting for community-based midwives and that's specifically because I want to address kind of a a hole in the education that I've seen so I am um, a a predominantly a U.S. midwife and I practiced in the United States for um, about uh, 18, 20 years. And I practiced in, um, homes and in birth centers. And I have found that there are so many midwives that came to midwifery through the path of nursing or came to midwifery through the path of doula work and neither adequately prepare them for, to be the primary care provider and to chart appropriately. So I'm so excited to bring this to this gold midwifery training, um, and share, um, a lot of, um, uh, 
tips and techniques. Um, I, I oftentimes say with total humility. Um, I learned about charting uh, by doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, So uh, I uh, got to experience uh, firsthand what it was like to to be investigated, to Mm -hmm. uh, have a lawsuit against me, to uh, be up against my board, um, and to really um, see how vitally important um, the the charting was, not only for the long-term, you know, support and record keeping of that client, of that family, but also for the defensive role that it plays for the provider. Um, And so since um, those, those years, and I, I, I'm happy to say that, um, you know, nothing, I never had a bad outcome. So I was never defending myself against, you know, some, some really challenging thing, which can happen. And I Mm -hmm. support lots of midwives in that situation, but I got to see when you practice in a hostile environment, um, when you practice in an environment in in the United States that we live in a for-profit medical world and, um, the physicians oftentimes are pitted against us. Um, we get complaints generated by the very physicians we take transports to and the only way to survive that kind of hostile environment is to really know what you're charting, why it matters, and how to word things in such a way that you can protect yourself as well as obviously legally document yeah, the birth. Absolutely. And and it is also to protect the, the profession. You know, I, I see a yeah. huge um, amount of people leaving the profession because they're burned yes. out or because of a situation. Maybe there was, a, a, you know, a situation that is tragic. And where the midwife really did everything she could and and the team did yeah. everything they could and and but it wasn't documented because you know uh, right. things got busy things got a little bit crazy you know a midwife's busy t- trying to take care of a mother and a baby and 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 then um you know she's being investigated or or being yep. taken to court and and she's telling saying, well, I did all that. And, and then the, you yeah. know, saying like, but it's not written down. It's not written down. And that's right. And so many people leave the yep. profession because they're saying like, I can't do this anymore. You know, uh-huh. you're, you're, you're so right. You're naming such a challenge and really who could do that? Who could be in persecution for their heart's work yeah. um, and 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 continue on, right? Mm-hmm. So this is this really special place where I'm blending um, the art and science and beauty of midwifery with a lot of, of medical legal jargon and knowledge, as well as a deep understanding of how the legal Mm -hmm. system works. And again, part of this is because of what I went through myself as a practicing midwife um, Mm -hmm. in a very hostile community. And part of this is because early on, I also brought um, a a lawyer onto my team. So um, I run an international consulting and education firm and a lawyer is a part of that. And so she and I have run podcasts and worked and talked and consulted on many cases around the country and it's just heightened this need. And so Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just really thrilled to be able to bring this to the audience at Gold. Thank you so much. Yeah. And and I, I can already uh, imagine that people who are listening to this now going like, oh my gosh, I need to get hold of her. I need to get talk to Augustine because, you know, if you're offering counseling, if you're offering a training or something in that uh, that area, please, uh, how can how can our listeners and viewers reach you? Because I'm sure there is a oh, ton sure. of people out there who want to know about this. Sure. Um, My team can easily be found at midwiferywisdom.com and on all social media platforms at midwiferywisdom. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much, Augustine, for spending time here with me. And I know we could talk for hours because it's such a fun. No, we really could. (laughs) Yes. And, uh, (laughs) but I'm so glad you're coming here to Gold and uh, presenting. And you are, and this is another interesting part here for us because the presentation is live, but of course recorded for anybody who is in a different time zone because your presentation for you is uh, in India. It is the 13th of February for us here on the East Coast of the United States on the 14th. And so, you know, there yes. is a way to uh, to listen to this or view this uh, recorded version, of course, as well. But if, and this is for our viewers now, if you want to be part of the live uh, presentation and find out all about the um, other live presentations that we have here at Gold, I uh, and to know when it's in your time zone, of course, I I would like to invite everybody to uh, find us on goldmidwifery.com for more information. And I hope to see everyone at the conference. Thank you so much, Augustine, and thank you to our viewers here today. Bye-bye, everyone.